As of the making of this video, it still doesn't look like we're done going through all this market turbulence that we've been experiencing for more than a month at this point. With talks about the Fed's raising interest rates as well as tensions going on in Ukraine, it's continued to spook the market across pretty much every sector for more than a month now. But anytime a situation like this happens, it always leads to a great opportunity to buy more shares of dependable, high-quality dividend-paying stocks at a major discount. Now don't get me wrong, I never hope for things like economic recessions, because even though we as dividend investors have a lot to gain from dramatic share price drops in our favorite dividend stocks, recessions always lead to harder economic times. For example, some people will lose their jobs forcing them and their families into poverty, and retirees living off of their 401ks will all of a sudden have less money to live off of while the market's falling, and then some people will lose so much money in their retirement accounts that they may have to put off retirement for several years, or even permanently, like what happened during the 2008 financial crisis, and so on. But there's no denying that sometimes these events can open up a lot of great opportunities for people who are looking to invest in income-producing stocks and ETFs. Like if the share price of Realty Income, which is a monthly dividend stock that's paid 618 consecutive monthly dividends and have increased it for 97 consecutive quarters, were to drop in share price by $10 due to a correction, you can bet that I'd be buying more shares hand over fist. So while I don't hope for these events to happen, I have to admit that I will use them to my advantage, since our goal is to be able to retire off of dividends as soon as possible. Dramatic drops in a stock's share price means we can buy even more shares if we have some cash on hand, and thus be closer to achieving this goal. But there's one stock in particular that I want to discuss today that's pretty popular with viewers on my channel. I see a lot of people leave comments saying how much they love this stock, and given all the market chaos going on right now, it now yields over 13.5% and it pays dividends on a monthly basis. With such a great dividend yield, I think it's worth asking the question, is this a good dividend stock to invest in for income? The stock I'm referring to is for Armor Residential REIT, which is ticker symbol ARR. This is a mortgage REIT that invests in residential mortgage-backed securities in the United States. Armor invests exclusively in residential mortgage-backed securities issued or guaranteed by a United States government-sponsored entity such as Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, or the Government National Mortgage Association. The company is managed by Armor Capital Management, which is an investment advisor registered with the SEC. The company was founded back in 2008 and they're headquartered in Vero Beach, Florida. As you can see, there's two things about this stock that make it particularly attractive to income investors. Obviously, the biggest thing is that dividend yield. Right now, Armor Residential currently yields about 13.75%, which looks amazing, right? That's pretty far above your average S&P 500 dividend stock, and even a lot larger than your typical mortgage REIT, which typically yield around 7 to 8% on average. The other really attractive thing about Armor is that it pays dividends on a monthly basis, as opposed to quarterly. This might not make much of a difference in terms of compounding your investment, but in all honesty, who wouldn't want their dividends every single month as opposed to every quarter? But if you're not too familiar, Armor Residential is structured as a REIT, or Real Estate Investment Trust. These are companies that own or finance income-producing real estate across a wide range of sectors. In order for a company to be qualified as a REIT, they need to meet a few certain requirements, like having to pay 90% of their earnings to shareholders in the form of dividends. They also must invest 75% of their total assets into real estate and earn at least 75% of their income from rents on their properties or interest on their mortgages. If a company can meet these requirements, then the company can be classified as a REIT and as a result they don't have to pay corporate income taxes. While most REITs own their own real estate properties, Armor Residential doesn't actually invest in physical real estate. Instead they invest in mortgages and earn money from the interest on those mortgages. So when compared to other REITs that own physical properties, otherwise known as equity REITs, mortgage REITs like Armor Residential are more like a bank and have less regulations. For one thing, they often use leverage as a means of trying to earn higher returns, which always makes things riskier whenever you use leverage as your business strategy. But on the positive side, mortgage REITs typically offer substantially higher dividend yields to shareholders. So finding a good MRE can be a great investment if you're looking for income. So while I was starting my research, what I thought was kind of strange was just how little information is available on Armour's website when compared to other MREITs. One thing I always like to do when analyzing a stock is to go to the company website and check out their latest investor presentation. I'd recommend anyone who wants to be a serious investor to do this because the investor presentations are kind of like a big brochure released by the company on a quarterly or monthly basis, depending on how frequently they announce earnings, that present information on the company's performance from the previous earnings announcement. These presentations are biased, so it's important to do more research than just this, but these are a good starting point. You can learn a lot about a company as well as the industry landscape that they operate in through these things. For Armor Realty, they really don't like to include much performance information in their investor presentations. In fact, their website as a whole just doesn't give me much information when compared to other companies. Let's take a look at a presentation by Annalee Capital Management, which is another mortgage REIT. 
This thing is 34 pages full of MREIT industry information, mortgage portfolio graphs, macroeconomic information that relates to the company, awards, environmental impact, among a lot of other good information. But for Armour, they don't present you with a whole lot of information here. I usually don't take this as a good sign, meaning that the company probably doesn't have a whole lot of good news to provide investors. Once we do take a closer look at this company, we can see several red flags that are associated with Armour Realty. For starters, this company has seen a significant reduction in their book value over the years. You can see that it's been on a downward trajectory since at least 2012. This is a really important metric for a mortgage REIT because book value is basically the net worth of the company. It's the total assets owned by the company minus the liabilities. So for mortgage REITs, it helps indicate how many mortgages an MREIT currently owns in its portfolio, which is how the company earns revenue in the first place. If an MREIT is holding fewer mortgages over time, this obviously means that there will be less mortgages to earn revenue from, and thus less money to pass on to shareholders. And in fact, we can see that Armour Residential has a long history of cutting their dividends. In the last 10 years, this company has reduced their monthly dividend amount 11 times. In fact, all the way back in 2011, this company used to pay 96 cents per share in monthly dividends, whereas today they now only pay 10 cents per share. That's a decrease of 89.58%. In my opinion, anytime you see a dividend stock cut its dividend more than a couple times within a 10-year span, that's a pretty big cause for concern. If a company reduces it by a penny or two, that's not too terrifying, but if there's several dramatic cuts, then that's a pretty big red flag to me. If we just look at the share price performance of this stock, we can see that it's currently down about 28.31% from this time a year ago today. It's also down nearly 60% in the last 5 years, and it's down over 84% in the last 10 years. If we just take a closer look at the 5-year performance, we can see that right before the pandemic plunge in 2020, the stock was trading at nearly $21 a share before plunging to about $6.27 at its worst during the pandemic. It started to recover from April of 2020 until about May of 2021, when it was around $12.5 a share, and it's been slowly going downhill ever since. Going back to their financials, there's more here that paints a grim picture of the company. Their net interest income has pretty dramatic swings as you can see, but everything keeps moving in a downward trend as time moves on. At this rate, I wouldn't be surprised if this company does cut their dividend again in the near future. But I guess if there is one thing to appreciate about Armour Residential, it's that it does use less leverage than the average MREIT. Their current leverage ratio as of third quarter 2021 is 5.37, and as you can see, the company has been using less as time goes on. The average leverage ratio among MREITs is roughly 6, which means that Armour has been decreasing the amount of leverage risk they've been exposing themselves to, although despite this, this hasn't appeared to have resulted in any kind of improvement in their financials or in their share price performance like we just saw. To summarize everything we've looked at, I know a lot of people like this stock for its extremely large monthly dividends. It's one of the only good things to like about this REIT, but even if you chose to reinvest all of your dividends into buying more shares of this company, you still wouldn't be making a profit from an investment in Armour. I tried checking the total return for a various amount of different times, including if you made a $10,000 investment into this stock a year ago, and then three years ago, and then five years ago, and not once was I able to find any sizable length of time you would have made money from this stock. If you regularly watch my channel, you might be noticing at this point that Armour Residential has a lot in common with another high-yielding dividend stock I covered three weeks ago, which was Orchid Capital. Both these two stocks are MREITs, pay monthly dividends, and offer extremely high dividend yields. And on top of that, for some reason, both of these are headquartered in the same small town of Vero Beach, Florida. To my knowledge, there's no connection between the two. They're both managed by different capital management companies. You might be wondering which stock I'd pick if I absolutely had to choose one of these companies to invest in, and while I don't hold either of them and I have no plans to, if given the choice I'd probably rather invest in Orchid over Armour. And the main reason for that is Orchid has had less dividend cuts over the years and it yields quite a bit more than Armour. Because of that it's slightly more possible to earn a profit with ORC than ARR. But as previously indicated, I don't plan to ever hold either of these two companies in my portfolio. It's ultimately your choice if you choose to invest in Armour Residential, but it really is like you're just burning money. My opinion on any dividend stock though is that at the very least, if you're not going to grow your dividend over the long term, your share price can't be declining over the long term like this. For example, there's a lot of business development companies out there that have a flatlining share price and no dividend growth, but they still offer really good yields of over 7% or more. Pennant Park Floating Rate Capital is one of those kinds of dividend stocks. If you're interested, I would like to give some alternative suggestions for you to consider. They don't offer yields as high as Armour or Orchid Island, but they do offer some great yields and you won't be burning money over time. Pennant Park is one suggestion that I really like. It's a BDC that also pays dividends on a monthly basis, too. Aries Commercial Real Estate Corporation is an emery that yields over 9% and has grown their dividend a little bit over the last 9 years. Finally, one more emery that has some great growth behind it is Arbor Realty Trust. 
It yields over 8%, and as you can see by their dividend history, the growth in their dividend over the last 10 years has been pretty excellent when compared to most MREITs out there. Alright everyone, that's going to wrap up today's video. Thank you all so much for watching, I really do appreciate it. If this video benefited you in any sort of way, please click the like button below, and click subscribe if you want to see more dividend investing strategy videos. It would just let me know that there's a sizable enough audience out there who wants this kind of content, and I'll continue to provide you all with that content. Alright everyone, thanks again for watching and I'll catch you next time. Take care.